everyone, Noble Artist here, and today in this video we're going to be doing a tutorial on how to make the Roman shield. This is my design right here. I think it's pretty cool. Lego made one that's not too shabby, but there's a little bit chunky, a little bit thicker than, I guess, proportionate to a figure. I mean, actually it's not too bad, it's just not that great. We could do a lot better. So I made this one right here the other day, and it is pretty awesome. It has more proportionate size to an actual person or Lego figure. And I think it's got a better shape and, you know, just all around, it's custom, which automatically makes it better. So what you're going to need for this build is a can of any type. I use a Sprite can. Now, one of the cool things about this type of can is you can use that metal for visors. So if you have like one of the old Mandalorians or one of the old clone troopers, sorry, the, the sunlight's working against me here. So if you put it underneath a helmet, you can kind of have one of those really cool shines and I've had figures that have had that before in the past. I'm not sure if I have one laying around. I actually do have one right here. Let me show you. All right, I'm not sure if you, how well you can see that, but that blue in that visor looks amazing. And I'm pretty sure that's actually the blue from one of these. It might've been from a Pepsi can. I can't remember, it's been a long time. But anyway, this has multiple uses for it. So get a can. I have this foam here. I believe you can get this in sheets of, you know, just like a big old sheet of foam. I think you can get these at like Michael or craft stores, maybe Walmart. This is going to be used for the inside for the handle and it's just easier to, to work with, honestly. So it can also be done with fabric. I think there's only two. I've a thin leather or pleather or whatever. So there's other materials you can use, but I found this one to be probably the best one for me to use. Tweezer bees, just because you might need to grab stuff. And then I have two different scissors because I don't know which one's going to work best on this can and I got to cut this. So one of these is actually sharper than my fabric scissors and I use them just for random stuff. So we're gonna start out by cutting a square because obviously I cut one out for this figure or for that shield right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my camera set up and show you how to do that. Alrighty, so I moved all the other materials aside and it doesn't really matter where you start, but be careful because this is sharp. When you cut this, there's gonna be sharp edges. So if you need an adult or a parent or someone who's better with scissors to do this, go ahead and pause the video if you're following along as you watch this and and get someone to help you so I'm gonna start from a side that's not the one I already cut just to show you what I did so unfortunately I'll, I'll mess up this beautiful green because that might be used later but what you're gonna do is just take your scissors and then poke a hole like so it's a tin can so it's not terribly strong and then just from that opening just start cutting and this is gonna be kind of crude you don't so we're gonna, I cut along the bottom and then it's gonna make a cut up the top this doesn't have to be like accurate. You just want to get a square to work with. So once you do that, you can kind of use your scissors to kind of pry it up a little bit. And then once you're at the bottom, you can literally just rotate it up as you cut. And again, be careful because these edges are sharp. I've done this several times, so I know what I'm doing, but just please be careful. I was gonna say don't try this at home, but the whole point of this is trying this at home. So, um, alrighty, so it's pretty much just a square piece of metal. That's what we're gonna work with, boom. All right, so the next thing you're going to do is take your piece of metal. I have here Jarvis. This is just a random figure that I don't care if he gets paint on or messed up. So I'm gonna use him as my reference guide. You kinda wanna see, obviously you don't want it to be as big as the figure himself because that's a little cray cray, but just sort of get it sized up. And right now we're mainly trying to get this, the edges smooth. So we're gonna cut a straight line, or we're gonna attempt to cut a straight line on each side, cause it's been sort of jagged from when we cut it. You can see it's all kind of bent up and stuff. So we're just gonna do this a little bit at a time because you can always cut more off, but you can't put it back on. So just do your best to get the edges lined up like so. So now we have a pretty uniformed, let me, uh, much better. All right, so let me uh, show you this one right here. So this is a pretty even square, but definitely not, um, not the shape exactly we're going for. I wanna compare it to the one I already made. So this one's actually a little bit shorter than the one we just made, but no worries because there's a lot of different shields out there, a lot of different designs, so it doesn't have to be the same one, you know. If you Google robe and shield, there's a lot of different patterns, but the main thing is the width. So we need this one a little bit 
just a little bit tr slimmer on the side. So going back to the scissors, there we go. So now we're going to compare these two again. I'll use this side, it's a little bit easier to see. No, oh, actually maybe that would be better. All right, so we have roughly the same size. Obviously you don't have one to measure it by, but what you're gonna to wanna to do is just hold it up to the figure and you kinda of wanna get a good feel for it. This is kind of up to you guys because like I said, it's sort of you know how you want it to look. So also I forgot another tool. I have this screwdriver just because the, uh, the shaft here is the right size, but sorry about that. I ran out of space for my memory card. So what I was trying to say was this metal bends pretty easily but at the same time it actually holds its, its edges pretty well or it holds its shape just because I think just it's um, the way it's treated I don't know it's it, either way you'll see what I'm trying to say but you're going to bend it over the um, over the screwdriver now the only reason I'm doing this is because I want to work with the the metal side, well it's all metal, but I wanna work with this side out and not with that side just cause it's kinda of confusing on the eyes. I'd rather have that be on the inside. And if you saw before I did that, the metal naturally bent with this side being on the outer side of the bow. Um, but yeah, so it doesn't have to be a screwdriver, it can be whatever you want, but you're just gonna bend it around there. And yeah, so once you do that, you will have the classic shape. This is the shape of the Roman shield. You can see how it has a nice even bend to it. And that is what we are going for, ladies and gentlemen. So that is the first part. You're gonna go ahead and set that down. Now, using the same metal, or you don't have to use the same metal, I am going to just because um, I have it here. This might, this will work. Let's see. Yeah, so what you're gonna do is cut a, a smaller square. Let me make sure it's lined up with the other one. So that's pretty good, yep. So. Also, looking this up, this can be what you want it to be. <clears throat> Whoa, be careful, pieces go flying everywhere. So, you're gonna cut a smaller square like so. Now, I found some of my old Roman shields. This is one of the first designs I made. Not too bad. This is a little bit better, so we're moving up, moving up in scale, so that's the back of it, if you wanna see. And so that middle piece right there, I kinda put a little design to it, so, you can do what you want. I found that a lot of Roman shields just have a like a traditional shield. I guess for the average Joe, just has like a square in the middle. So I'm gonna just make my square and then I'm gonna go back to my screwdriver and try to put a little bend in it. This piece is smaller so it's a little harder, but there is a little bend. Enough bend for it to go around the shield. And we're gonna line that up where we want it like so. Now we get to the glue in. This is the glue that I use. I uh, will get a link in the description pretty soon. Uh, I'll find a way for y'all to get the materials that I use so you can do your own stuff or you, at least use what I use. So I'm gonna put some glue on the back. The nice stuff about this glue it particularly is it dries like when it dries, it's not gonna move. Like whatever you're gluing to is gonna be there for a long while. But it also doesn't dry super duper fast, so I can actually move this around a little bit because I want to position it. I want it to be even. I want to be right in the middle of the of the shield. Now this might be kind of hard to see. I might have been better off using the other side just so y'all can see what I'm doing. But I'm just gonna push it down a little bit. It's okay if some of the glue goes off to the side and right there it takes some of your skin off because it's glue and it's. It's sticky. So right there we have the piece in the middle. This is what we got so far. Now for the middle piece, I actually sculpted the middle, the center for mine. So this is, this is what mine looks like. I actually sculpted that piece in the middle out of clay just because it got a really good shape to it and it's proportionate. I actually didn't paint the back of mine, so mine's still <laughs> as is. But that's a pretty good looking shield if I do say so myself. But an alternative to sculpting if you do not have clay you might not have this either, but these chains are everywhere and they uh, they get the job done. So this is like a dog tag type chain. A lot of things have them. If you can, you can sneak one off of the cord of your ceiling fan and no one will know. But we're gonna take one of those links and cut that off. And now we have this little itty bitty cylinder, which would fit perfectly right smack dab in the middle 
And we are going to attempt to hold it for tweezer bees, like so. It's it's really small piece, but we'll make it work. And don't worry if you get glue all over the place at this process, because when you paint it, you're not going to see it. So, yeah. And then we're going to have our glue right there in the middle. And then just gently, ever so gently, place this right there. Now, boom. Not too shabby. Now, there's a lot of different ways to do this. You can probably find other materials to put in the middle. It's all up to y'all. You can put a spike if you want to. You can change it up. This doesn't have to be a Roman shield. This is very common. I wouldn't say, well, their shield is very unique, but there are a lot of shields that are shaped similar to this way. It's just, at this point, it's critical. You can paint it how you want it. It doesn't have to be a Roman shield, but for the contest, it kind of has to be. So anyway, we're gonna move on to probably the most important part is going to be the hand grip. So for the hand grip, take your foam or fabric. If you have a different material, follow along it's the same steps so we are going to find our I guess the length of the shield and you want to get a piece at least the length of the shield so let me put this back on camera so I'm gonna go right about here and just cut a cut a piece off it doesn't really you can again we're gonna be trimming this down so right now I have a piece about this length a little bit longer than the shield, that's okay. This is the situation where more isn't gonna be a bad thing. Trim that a little bit. All right, so now what we're gonna do is right in the middle, we're going to bend the fabric or whatever materials, we're gonna bend that in the middle and just cut on one side and then scoot over a little bit and then cut. So we're basically doing two cuts and then we're going to open it back up and then where we have now this piece right here you can slip your scissors through cut one side which opens it up and cut off sorry about all of that so my memory card ran out of space which is sad and I realized that I had another memory card but the sadder part is the one that I had was a four gigabyte memory card and the other one that I wasn't using was 16 gigabytes. And I actually changed the quality of my camera to get more like recording time out of it. And it still ran out and I put this one in and although this memory card has a lot of info on it, I checked how much available space I had at full HD and it was like 40 minutes. So we're gonna use this memory card for now on and we're definitely good to go to continue. So. If you saw before that break, um, I basically cut out a just like a sliver in the middle of this here piece. Now, this is going to be important because this is where the Lego ha figure's hand is going to go. So go ahead and take your figure and see if that's even going to work. And I can see here that I'm going to have to do a little bit more. But you want to be careful because you want this to be somewhat tight. You don't want the figure's hand to just freely go through it. So I'm gonna go right here on this edge and just cut over a little bit and try to just cut a little bit more off. There we go. So I just made that a little bit wider, which is what we're looking for. And again, take your figure's hand and because this moves, you can just kind of force his hand through there and take a look, see what you're working with. And as long as the figure's hand can kind of, you do have to wiggle a little bit to get it to go in there, but we want it to be um, kind of snug around the, the wrist so it doesn't pop off. So now we're gonna go to the back side of the shield and see how wide this is. It's still a little wide, so I'm gonna trim the edges down. And make sure you don't go too far because if this material gets super thin, then you run the risk of it breaking on you, which would be sad. But if you use fabric, it doesn't really have that risk. But, you know, there's other challenges of using fabric. So what we're going to do is now we have to glue this to the shield. So it's important to go. You don't want to go to the top because when you bend it to glue the other piece down, you're going to have your starting point where the hand's going to be. Actually, this one might work better. Because mine, mine was a little bit different. I had to start it at a little bit, it's underneath that white line. I had to start mine a little bit lower. 
I had a shorter piece to work with, but we're gonna take the tweezer bees and hold our, our hand grip. And I'm actually gonna put the glue on the, the grip. It's or on the, here on the grip, I was gonna put it on the shield, but it's important to put it on the piece you're gluing. So if you had to put it somewhere else, you'll have the glue where you want it. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and just stick that right there at the top. And I'm gonna push it down. Now again, like I said, this glue kind of gives you a little bit of play. It can be moved, it can wiggle around a little bit, but once I push down on it, that pretty much locks that into place. So now we're gonna bend the other part right here. I'm gonna bend that up. Make sure you don't glue too much of this top piece down because you you still wanna be able to, to bend it. So. I think that's a good bend. Also, you wanna leave enough space right there so your Lego hand, figure's hand can go through it. So if I were to glue it like that, his hand would hit the back of the shield before it fully locked into place. So you wanna bring it up a little bit, not too much, not too little. So it looks something like that. That's where I want it, cool. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the glue on now that I sort of positioned how I wanted it. Now we're just gonna bend this piece up. If it wants to, or slide it, however we can get it to go. And just push. And again, this type of metal, like this one, I had to paint it three times. So I had to scratch all the paint off and I was kind of rough with it because the paint somewhat had dried, like the, the red paint was drying. And it's hard to tell, I mean, it. It still held its shape. I didn't have to re-bend this at all because I already had that on there. So I manhandled this thing three different times painting it and it still held the shape because once you bend this metal, it kind of wants to just stay where it's at. So don't worry about it getting all bent out of shape because it, this type of metal holds the shape pretty well. Now that we have done that, we're gonna go ahead and give it a test. All right, so let's get this in the hand and see what it looks like. So what you're gonna do is Push one side, sorry, there's a bunch of stuff in my way. All right, so push one side to the side. And then slip the hand in like that. Kind of wiggle it around a little bit, make sure it's got a good feel, and boom. So the cool thing about this type of hand grip, I know I did a video, I think, on this before, but if you have a soldier and you want to have his shield up in front of him, he can. If you want to have it down by his side in front of him, you can, if you want him to raise it up, it's fully posable. You can spin it, you want a different angle, you want it on the side if he's running this way and he wants to block you know, up. I mean, it can go in any position that you could hold one. And then you can even go to the side and push his arm through this way and he can hold it like to his side. So yeah, there's a lot you can do, it's very versatile. You don't technically have to paint this back part, but it's yellow. I don't know if you can find this in any other color. My foam actually came from a giraffe hat someone gave me, so mine is yellow and blue and these crazy colors, so mine's yellow. I'll probably paint mine because I don't, I don't want that. I might make mine black or brown or some color that resembles some sort of fabric or leather, so. Anyway, that is that and Mine does have an outer trim. I don't know if you guys want that, this gold trim on the sides. That is, an, that's actually pops out a little bit. I don't know if it's gonna focus now. Um, so if you wanna do that, that's an extra step. If you wanna add a little extra pizzazz to your shield, I'll go ahead and show you how to do that. But if you don't care for that part of the design, if you wanna do your own design or add something else to it, that's, pretty much where this video ends for those who want to know how to make the Roman shield. Now all you have to do is use your imagination, paint it up. I suggest go to Google, look it up what I did, and just see designs. There's a lot of them, a lot of really cool ones. I just picked one that looked like it was a, a winner. That's a pretty good design, so I stayed with that one. You can use the one that Lego has on their shield that's also kind of close to what I did. But anyway, I'll show you how to put those on the side and uh, we will get started. So get metal, I have, this is thinner metal that I use. This is more for crafting. So if you have a craft store, get some craft metal. I will also try to get a link to, like I said, all my materials um, in the bottom, but you wanna make sure you get 
this to be a little bit longer than what you need. So we're gonna go ahead and measure that. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut four lengths of this. Alrighty, so we have our four pieces cut and I have duckbill pliers just because when you cut these pieces so small, they kind of bend and go in weird directions. Like right now, this one's actually doing its own thing and that's not acceptable. So what we are going to do is flatten these out just a little bit and we're going to get to getting. So this one, this is actually fairly simple. You're just gonna put a little glue on one side like so. Well, I don't know if you saw that because it might've been off camera. All right, so what you're gonna do is just put it at the top of the corner. You might have to hold it there for a second. Like that. And then just put your finger there. And then you wanna bend it, see what you got. Here, hold on, let me change the camera angle. All right, I'm gonna bring that up a little bit higher so you can see. So we're gonna put our finger and basically held that corner down. And then what we're gonna do is, now that that corner's on, it's, it's gonna stay there. So bend the other side back. And then here we're just gonna add the glue to the corner itself, just a little bit, because we do have all this extra. And then just fold that piece back down onto the edge. Make sure you have this along the top. Make sure it's flush. Alrighty, that took a little bit longer than I wanted to, but you could see how it's not like a simple, I mean it's simple, but it's not like a super quick process. I sped that up so you don't have to watch the whole thing, but if you notice that one of the pieces came off at the beginning because the glue stuck to my finger and I pulled it off, and there's just working with um, this type of stuff, you run the risk of gluing your fingers to a lot of things and the piece is not always going where you want them to go. So you gotta have to work with it. You know, it's not perfect, but that is the end result. Now you have that really cool border around your shield. So also when you go to paint it, it's gonna be nice because the paint's gonna stay within the, the main part of the shield. And this outer part, like for mine, I painted it gold, but you can paint whatever you want. It gives it a pretty cool, um, just some extra texture and detail. And yeah, it's pretty cool, I like it. All right, so now we're gonna do the last part of just finishing up everything. I'm gonna round off the corners. You can leave your shield however you want it if you like the square look. Yeah, I'm gonna round off these corners, which is very simple and easy. It doesn't matter which way you do it, but just take your scissors and kind of just trim one side. Just go slow. You don't wanna get hurt and you kind of just cut an angle, boom, and then another angle. There's only like two or three cuts and it looks rounded. Boom, super simple. It's a very small detail, but it kind of makes it look a little nicer. If you want, I can paint it. I'll just show you, might as well because who doesn't want to know how to paint? It's a very helpful skill. So let's get our red paint somewhere. Now, I actually ran out of gold yesterday. And by ran out, I mean it dried up because there was not a lot left in there, but it got messed up. Um, so brushes, I just have an old brush. And this is Tester's paint. It kind of permanent. In a way, it's more um, resilient to coming off quickly. So if you mess up, like I did, you gotta scratch it all off and it's a pain. And it doesn't all come off either. So make sure you're doing the color you want. So, cause we're doing Romans, I'm just gonna hold it with my tweezer bees and then just drop a spot of paint in the middle. 
Now when this dries, it is going to be a little bit of a matte finish. It's not going to be this glossy. It looks kind of glossy when you're painting. Like, ah, I don't really want a super shiny shield, which it's not bad. It's just not the look everyone's going for. And also, like I said before, don't ma doesn't matter if you get glue on the shield because you'll be painting it and you can just paint over it so you won't see it. So just get a get a dollop. Actually, I'm going to take this off of the tweezer bees because I, I need to get a little bit closer. And once you get a, a, a decent sized bead of glue, why did I say bead of glue? Bead of paint! Then you can just use your paintbrush to just kind of push it around. And another nice thing about having the sides, if you just if you decide if you decide to have the sides, it holds the paint in where you want it. So, not to say if you didn't have these and you wanted the whole thing red, you could obviously still do that. But it does give you a nice border to hold on to and it keeps the paint from going all over creation. Now I definitely recommend taking your time with the paint. I had to paint mine like I said three times because for one I'm kind of a perfectionist with stuff and when I know I can do it better then why not? You know, why settle for less? So, now, granted, the end result of my shield, I'm like, I did paint it three times, and I'm not gonna lie, some of the features were better on some of the other attempts. But overall, I think it turned out pretty good. I was happy with it. I'm like, you know what? If I keep messing up, because I don't know what I'm doing, I'm gonna just quit while I'm ahead. And I liked where it ended up so yeah just you get to a point where you're like you know what that's pretty good and you're gonna add other features and it kind of it all meshes together so if you don't like one part of it then I don't know you'll have other other accents that can make up for one blunder so boom that is that the middle is going to be painted silver and then the outside is going to be painted gold that's what i saw on the interwebs but there's a lot of different designs if you see how it's kind of silver naturally before it's painted that looks pretty good too i've seen some with gold in the middle silver on the outside silver on both you know there's a lot of different designs this is what i came up with and it dries like that it actually dries really awesome it looks more like it's painted on a piece of wood or, or how they i think the, the actual roman shield is i think it's a thin layer of metal on a wood background but i don't know the mechanics of it but that's what it looks like this one, it looks a little bit different because the paint's not dry yet, but um, yeah, this is just a different version of the same thing. So anyway, this has been quite a lengthy video. I hope you all enjoyed it. And sorry if the camera isn't focusing all the way. And I do apologize for the weird cutting of this video. If it seems like I kind of cut myself off sometimes, it's because my memory card was being all silly. But hopefully I got that fixed and that issue won't happen again. But anyway, and don't forget, if you liked it, hitch, hike it. Don't forget to fist pound that subscribe button in the middle. Bam! And if you want to see more tutorials and customs, let me know. Don't forget to, uh, to enter. So, yeah, that's kind of a big part of a contest. You got to enter it to, uh, to uh, yeah, to compete. So, go ahead and use this design for your shield if you want to. Or use these techniques you've learned for the hand piece to... The grip on the back and other things to make your own and yeah you guys have until the end of this month which is good enough time i'm also going to do a tutorial on the spear and i think that might be it for the roman i might do i'm actually working on a gladius which is kind of tricky also but i might do a gladius one i might just do all the weapons and these weapons will probably be the prizes for this contest so anyway I'm going to go ahead and get working on my clone army build that I was going to do and try to figure out how to do this Mandalorian helmet because that's a doozy. So anyway, thank you so much for watching. God bless. You guys have an awesome Tuesday and I will see you next time.